Welcome to Electron Online, and in this next video we're going to take a look at what we call the types of crystals, the different kinds of crystals, and they're typically classified by the type of bonding that exists between the atoms and the molecules, basically what the forces are that hold them together. So we have what we call ionic bonding, ionic forces holding the atoms together, we have covalent bonding, we have molecular bonding, like the van der Waals forces, and then we have the metallic bonding with the sharing of the electrons. So we'll take a look at each one of those, and let's start with the ionic bonding, the ionic kind of crystals. Now, of course, when we deal with ionic bonding, that means you're dealing with ions, and we have the anions and the cations, so negative and positively charged ions. Those are usually accomplished by the um, anion gaining electrons from the other element and the element that's losing electron becoming of course the cation because it loses electron and becomes positively charged. Because of that they have different sizes. The cations that lose an electron now there's a, a strong positive charge in the center. I shouldn't say strong but there's more positive charge at the center of the atom than there's negative charge in electrons and the electrons get drawn closer in so cations tend to be smaller anions which gain an extra electron, there's more negative charge and positive charges, they tend to repel each other and negative ions tend to be larger in size. So you can see that anions tend to be bigger, cations tend to be smaller. But there's an advantage to that as far as crystalline structure is concerned. One is that the forces between ions are very very strong and therefore there's high melting points. In other words, the bonds are strong, they tend to be very strong crystalline structures, hard to break them apart, they tend to be very strong, and so they tend to have therefore high melting points. Another advantage, in a way, is that because of the difference in sizes, they can pack very densely together. So the smaller positive ions can fit into the spaces left over by the big ions, fill it up, and so you have typically a structure that looks like this, is of course what we would call sodium chloride, looks like that. And so the, these are the large negative chlorine ions, these are the small positive sodium ions, and see how they're arranged like that. They're arranged in a simple cubic structure, as we call it, and you can see that the unit cell encompasses the atoms like that, so that we go from the center of the chlorine ion to the center of the next chlorine ion, and encompassing the full diameter of the sodium ion. Notice then that the length of the side of the unit, of the unit uh, cube is equal to two times the radius of the chlorine ion plus two times the radius of the sodium ion because of course you're taking the full diameter plus a half a chlorine ion here plus a half a chlorine ion there. Now let's see here the chlorine ions have a radius of 181 picometers so this would be equal to two times 181 picometers plus two times the radius of the sodium ion I believe is 95 picometers if I remember that right. So let's see here, where's my calculator? What would be the full um, size of one of those unit cells for sodium chloride? We have 181 times 2 plus 95 times 2 equals 552 nanometers. Oh, not nanometers, that would be a huge cell, a 552 picometers. Now that's again based on the average size of these ions. It turns out in real life when we do um, x-ray diffraction on it we find that the actual cell size, unit cell size, is equal to 564 picometers. So it looks like it's not taking the full advantage of the sodium and chlorine uh, difference, differential in size the repulsive forces between the large chlorine ions probably push the ions a little bit further apart than they could be and because of that in this particular structure they're apart just a little bit more and with a total distance of 564 picometers from the center of one chlorine ion to the center of the other chlorine ion. But anyway, talking about ionic bonding, tends to be very strong, tends to be very dense packed, tends to have very high melting points and boiling points due to the fact that these are strong bonds because of the exchange of electrons and difference, differential in size, they're able to really bond together quite strongly like that. Okay, and there's our first one. I'll show you some more examples of this one and the other ionic or, and the other crystal structures in the next few videos.